I love being on set, I love shooting, I love the adventure of a production. Sometimes I'm just really curious if I have all the pieces I need. You want work to not feel like work. I like to work with friends because there's that comfort zone of you just understand each other in a way and there's the preciousness of a working relationship falls away and it feels more like you're just hanging out with somebody. Working with Andrew certainly just feels like I'm hanging out with a friend and we're able to laugh and cry and you know annoy each other uh, and poke fun at each other in ways that are just it feels like you're just hanging out with, with a pal and and having that environment on set go, that goes for everybody. It's a lot of just long gradual conversations that we don't realize are necessarily conversations about the movie at first. You know, it starts with a script and just talking about the immediate ideas that come to mind, whether those are references to other movies. Often it is because we just both love watching movies. We both will have like lookbooks that we make. We really just feel like we're friends, you know, hanging out, watching movies, talking about movies and happen to be making movies at the same time. A lot of the, the development process comes when we're location scouting. And location scouting, I think, is like the, the unheralded aspect of movie making that is one of the, the most important because it's the first thing you usually do and you go look at the places in which you're gonna make the movie, but in between looking at those places, you spend hours at a time in a van. And usually what happens is over the course of those van rides, I think I found on all my movies, they, that's when the movie really starts to come together because you're thinking about it and the movie's in your head because you're, you're thinking about, will this location work? Will this location offer us what we need? Does it have the light that we're gonna be looking for? Does it have windows in this part of the building versus this part? And as you're like answering those questions for yourselves on a very technical level, you're also really investigating what it is you want out of the movie. I never have a completely preordained idea of what the movie's gonna be when we begin the process. Some of it's there. I do write shots into the script. I have very strong visual instincts early on when I'm writing with visuals in mind, but I'm always happy to throw those away if a better idea comes about. And I think that a lot of that happens in those early, those early morning van rides while we're location scouting. My rule of thumb is just cast really good actors, and that's the lion's share of the work will be done at that point. And then I like to follow their lead because they are the ones who are going to be, you know, having to inhabit these characters and, and deliver these lines that I've written. So once, you know, I've cast somebody and once we trust each other, I sometimes have an idea about, you know, where I want them to stand or where I want them to walk or what the blocking should be. But more often than not, I'd rather see what their instincts are. And sometimes I'll need them to change that. Like sometimes they'll have an idea that for one reason or another doesn't work for the movie. But more often than not, their ideas are great. Those are ideas that I wouldn't come up with myself because I'm not the one performing the scene. What an actor brings to the table is an insight that I will never have because I'm not a performer. And that's something that I would, I feel like I'd be foolish not to just take advantage of when that op those opportunities are given to me. When you see Pete, Kim. So she points this way. Every movie has a scene where you just like, you realize it's not working and you don't know always what it is. And I think one of the great lessons I've learned is to be able to admit that. And sometimes you just need like five minutes to just think about it, clear your head. And other times you need to come back to it later. When you get into the edit, you're always gonna see things that you didn't necessarily have the perspective to see while you're in production. Sometimes you just have to on the fly just try to process what it is that is rubbing you the wrong way. And often it's moving the camera, just moving it somewhere else. Often you don't know what it is that's gonna make it better, but you just let, you just know you have to try something different than what you're doing. Rather than do like 20 takes, hoping that one of them will be magical, it's sometimes important to just like stop whatever it is, like, like say you're doing a medium close up on somebody and it's just like feeling wrong. It's like, okay, well let's just do a wide two shot and watch the scene from a different perspective and see how that changes my feeling and maybe that will tell me what it is that is feeling so wrong about this scene and feeling around in the dark trying to find what it is that will feel right for the movie that you're making. You know, sometimes you're like gonna tear a set down or you are gonna leave a location and you just wanna know that you have it all. And so I'll go to the DIT and just give them a hard drive and, or usually I'll get a hard drive at the end of the day with everything regardless and just 
smash and edit together just really quickly just to make sure that I'm not overlooking something. Once you get into the edit and have all of the, the footage that you've gathered, that's where you really are crafting the movie. And it's, it's where I feel the most at home in the process. And it's really, to me, even now, that's where the movie gets made. Thank you.